Monster Gardeners, thanks for logging on to MonsterGardens.com. We're here to start part two of how to mix a reservoir. This is the organic portion of our video, so we're going to start by breaking down exactly the best way for you to mix your reservoir. For all of you out there that are aeroponic, drip irrigation, ebb and flow, or any kind of hydroponic garden, this is not the video for you. You should go back to part one and we can break down exactly how you should mix your synthetic reservoir. So today in this segment of the video we're going to talk to you a lot about Nectar for the Gods. Monster Gardens makes this our number one recommended organic nutrient line. What makes it unique? Well the big thing is it's hydrolyzed, it's pre-digested. That means an enzyme has consumed the organic matter and has pooped out a plant available form of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So the cool thing about it being pre-digested and ready to feed is you immediately see a difference when you feed your plants. So you're going to put it into the root zone and just like that you're going to come back and your plants are going to respond. Unlike traditional organics where you may feed your soil, the soil breaks it down and then the soil feeds the plants. This is immediately available for the plants to take up and so you will see an immediate explosion once you feed nectar for the gods. Pumps in the reservoir. This is a very common topic. Many of you that watch part one probably heard me go on for about five minutes and you're thinking, gosh, how much stirring do I really need to do? Well, twice as much as you did in the first one because organics is way more important. So we're going to have a stir pump in this video because it's going to be used to mix the nutrients around. However, the thing to know about organics is a lot of times you're going to be having those root inoculants that we've talked about that are going to be stirring themselves around this reservoir. So if you have a pump that's on your reservoir consistently, you might want to pull it out of the reservoir and clean it from time to time. As we're going to show you, pumps have a tendency to get a calcium buildup, especially on a line like this that's going to be calcium based. So this pump here, you can see it's just going to be used as our stir pump. However, when it was previously used in a reservoir, you can see the calcium buildup that happened on here. It's going to be caught all in the pre-filter on the inside in there. This guy is on there pretty good. Whoa, look at all that calcium that came out of there. Now what that is is going to be an anaerobic bacteria as well as a calcium deposit buildup, which could add to your parts per million if you're using a synthetic regimen, or it could potentially harbor any pathogens or any anaerobic bacteria that may be detrimental to your root zone. So what a lot of our members here have done is they pull the piece off and remove the pre-filter because it's less area for those little anaerobic bacteria to colonize. Another thing is just by simply dropping it in hydrogen peroxide and that's going to sterilize your pump. Day in and day out I talk to people that grow organically and what they like to do is they just use stirring sticks. They don't even use pumps because they find that pumps are going to cut down on the amount of living biological activity that's happening in the reservoir, which is true. And so anytime you have more than 70 pounds of pressure in a reservoir, you're killing off biological activity. Especially if you have an impeller in your pump, that's going to be chopping up a lot of those organisms. Granted, they're pretty microscopic, so they may swim around the impeller, but if it's on consecutively, what you're going to notice is that the population is going to get lower and lower as the days go on. And that's another one of those reasons why organics don't favor in a hydroponic system. All right, many of you viewers out there are probably waiting for me to fill this bad boy up, so let's go ahead and dump in these nutrients. So we have our reservoir filled up here with chlorine free water. We have a pump in the corner that's going to be circulating a lot of our nutrient solution. And we're going to go ahead and just go down the line with the nectar for the gods. And many of you out there that are using it or are looking at the feeding chart at home, we're going off of the early flowering feeding recipe. So let's go ahead and add this. Like I said, we have chlorine free water, that's what we're starting with. The big thing to keep in mind is organics are thick. So always make sure and mix them up really well. The last thing you want is a little sediment at the bottom of your bottle. That's money that you just wasted. Based on 20 gallons here, Medusa's Magic is at two teaspoons a gallon or 10 milliliters per gallon. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do 200 milliliters. So I go over to my Measure Master beaker I go right up to the 200 mark. Now as we mentioned in part one of the video, what I want everybody to do is always dilute their nutrients as they go into the water. Always dilute them first. This is going to allow for the nutrients to not be quite as shocked as they hit a different pH level and they don't fall out of solution. Now it's also very important of you out there to always mix the reservoir. Yes, you do have a stir pump in there, but I always encourage a stir stick between bottles. Next on the list is Gaia Mania. This can be used at two teaspoons 
up to one tablespoon per gallon. In the early flowering recipe, we're gonna be using this at two teaspoons a gallon, which is 10 milliliters per gallon. So again, you wanna mix it up really well. And just like the Medusa's Magic, we're gonna be feeding 200 milliliters. So you're gonna notice that with the organics, it's a bit thicker. However, with the Nectar for the Gods, the fact that it's pre-digested, it actually is thinner compared to other lines. Next one on the list is Zeus Juice. This is one of my favorite products on the line. This can be used both foliar and through the roots. What you're gonna notice is that this one is also being used between one and two teaspoons a gallon. I always like to use it at two teaspoons a gallon because you're getting a little more seaweed and a little more fulvic acid into the root zone. So again, we're gonna be feeding this at 200 milliliters. Now the big thing about Nectar for the Gods is you're gonna notice at first they're gonna have kind of a mint smell. It's because at Nectar for the Gods they realize they're putting a lot of organic matter that kind of have a, oh, kind of a rough smell about them. So they add a little menthol to it, so that way it gives a little bit of a menthol, mint scent to it over the first few openings. You'll notice after it's been opened and closed a few times, some of that menthol will go away and you're gonna start getting a little more of the roadkill smell. With that Zeus juice, it really darkens the color of that water. Next one on the list is Herculean Harvest. Herculean Harvest is one of the favorites on the line. It, what it is is a cattle bone meal, calcium phosphate product, very rich in calcium. But because of that and because it is bones, it has a tendency to fall to the bottom of the bottle and or the reservoir. So just make sure you stir it up really well. You might even want to go back halfway through watering and stir your reservoir one last time, just so none of that sediment falls to the bottom. Stir pump definitely helps that. At the, at the early flowering, this is going to be used at two tablespoons per gallon. So what that's going to be is 600 milliliters. So what I'm going to do is go to the very top at 500. Oh yeah, look at that stuff. It's like a milkshake. But don't drink it like a milkshake. This does not bring all the boys to the yard. In fact, it brings them to your grow room. And now an additional 100 milliliters. Now again, this stuff's really thick. I know I'm sounding like a broken record over here, but make sure you stir it up very well. Last thing you want is to not get all the calcium phosphate that you paid for. Just get a nice cyclone going. That's gonna keep all those nutrients in solution. So the next one on the list is a CalMag product. This is Demeter's Destiny, a really nice product. You're gonna see it kind of has a milky consistency, so you may need to uh, dilute your measuring cup a couple of times just so none of it builds up on the side walls. So again, you wanna shake it up really well. I always like to give all my bottles a little shake, a little shake or two. This one is gonna be used at one teaspoon to two teaspoons a gallon. So that's again gonna be five to 10 milliliters per gallon. At the early flowering regimen, it's at 10 milliliters per gallon. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fill up 20 milliliters. Now you're gonna see what I was talking about. We're gonna dilute it. And you see how some of it still builds up on the side walls there? You're just gonna to wanna to do this a couple of times. See it's starting to get a little less. And after just a few times, it comes off the side walls of the measure beaker. Now many of you out there that are using Demeter's Destiny and are using it with an air pump, you're gonna notice when you have a lot of oxygen going into your water, it's gonna foam up like crazy. So Demeter's Destiny might be one of those products you might wanna add at the end if you are using air stones or just simply unplug your air pump. The reason I say that is because it's gonna make reading your pH and parts per million quite difficult when you have a huge head of foam coming out of your drum. Next one on the list is Athena's Aminas. What this is gonna be is a 
Vegetable protein hydrolysate, so this is gonna be full of amino acids, can also be sprayed through the leaves or fed through the roots. So this one's used at 15 to 30 milliliters per gallon or one to two tablespoons per gallon. So we're gonna go ahead and feed this at the one tablespoon level, which is gonna be 300 milliliters. Now you're gonna see this liquid is relatively thin, which is very favorable compared to other amino acid products on the market. However, this is so thin that it works great as a foliar application. I highly recommend it with any foliar products that you are already currently using or add it to your regimen. You may notice a huge increase in your pl plant growth rate. All right, the secret weapon to the nectar for the gods, the Bloom Chaos. This is an awesome product, and many of you out there call in the store and tell us, can I feed this through the roots? I see it says foliar spray on the label. It works better through the roots because you're getting more of that product in there. You're getting more of that calcium facilitator. That thing is going to drive the plants to grow at unbelievable growth rates. This, coupled with the Herculean harvest, is going to have the plants booming. Not only will it increase flower sites, but it also keeps your internodal spacing shorter so the plants don't stretch quite as fast. Now the other thing also when you're foliar spraying it and root drenching it is you'll see your plants turn over into flower much quicker. So you're gonna have a longer flowering time of flower development and less time of stretching. So again, this one's gonna be used at one tablespoon per gallon or 15 milliliters per gallon. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use 300 milliliters. Now this is the sample sized bottle so it does go relatively quick, but we should still have enough here just to get to that 300, just shy of 300 which is fine. Our plants are still gonna love it. If you can get any bloom chaos into your regimen, you're gonna notice unbelievable leaps and bounds in your growth rates. Now, if you're foliar spraying the bloom chaos, keep in mind that you're gonna use it at one teaspoon per quart. So that might be uh, 20 milliliters per gallon or 40 milliliters into an atomizer. Works very well, spray both bottom sides and top sides of the leaves. All right, so we're just gonna give our nutrients one last stir just before we measure the pH of the nutrients. You might be wondering, what about EC? What about electrical conductivity and the parts per million of this water? Well, the fact that these aren't salt-based, they aren't gonna really conduct much of an electrical charge. So PPM's EC is somewhat out of the question. If you were to do a PPM check on this, it'd be all over the map. And the reason is because it's calcium-based. Calcium is gonna form a little bit of a charge, so you're gonna notice your ratings are gonna be all over the board. However, pH is still pretty crucial. If you have a really highly inoculated medium that is gonna have a lot of soil structure using soil biology, you're gonna notice that if you have a little bit of an influx in your pH, they're gonna find the right balance and they're gonna figure out what the proper pH level is for the proper nutrient uptake. So pH is very crucial. At the same time with organics, it can still swing slightly. It's not gonna be as crucial as it is with a synthetic regimen because with synthetics, there is no buffer between roots and fertilizer. With an organic regimen, they still have the soil and they still have the soil biology that's gonna allow the medium to somewhat balance and so nutrients aren't just immediately taken up if they aren't at the proper pH level. But still, let's go ahead and we're gonna measure the pH. And we're also gonna show you how the PPMs are somewhat all over the board. If you're not satisfied with this pH level, or say this was down a couple of points, you need to bring it up, Nectar for the Gods does have a great pH up product. It's actually a ground limestone product, so it's gonna be a very organic way to raise your pH. The cool thing about this stuff too is it is another form of calcium. So again, you're gonna be feeding your plants the calcium that they needed. So what we're gonna do though is we're gonna leave this right at 6.1 because this is pretty ideal for an early flowering. Some people might like to bring it up to 6.3 and keep it there at all times. I find most of our customers locally and all over the United States are starting to turn over to cocoa fiber mediums, and that's where this 5.8 to 6.3 is the hot zone right for all organic and synthetic nutrients. So again, I wanna show you guys what the parts per million is gonna show. See, it's showing right around 1,000, 1,100, 1,150. That's fine, totally fine. However, you might mix this exact same reservoir up tomorrow and it might be slightly different. And it's because maybe you didn't mix a bottle as well as you did the time before. It might be your base water may have changed slightly. Um, it could be a number of things. So generally we like to keep PPMs out of the question with organics, but it's still not a bad idea just for reference. We're gonna go back over to pH. See, it's gonna be right at 6.2, 6.1, right where we left it. All right. So now that we have our organic reservoir mixed up, 
We have the temperature dialed in where we want it and the pH level dialed in the way we want it. Now we're ready to feed our plants. So now it's time for you guys out there to smell and taste the benefits of organics.